I think they have a smaller crowd than that. Everybody took Mother's Day off. Well, it's good to see you guys. We have much to do today. God has many, many things He wants to accomplish. And um, it's going to be a good morning. Mother's Day morning. Okay? It's going to be a nice All right, let's pray this morning as we get ready to begin worship. Let's stand together for a moment. Hallelujah. Oh, Let me just thank you today. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your glory. Father, we thank you for your word, and we thank you for the blood of Jesus. And Lord, we just declare the victory of your blood today over our lives. Father, we just put our hearts, our attention on you to worship you. Father, I thank you that when we come together, Father, that there's a greater anointing, there's a corporate anointing. And so, Father, we stir our faith today. Father, we, we stir and raise our expectation today. To love you, to honor you, to worship you, God, with everything that's within, within us. And Lord, we know that you're present. Holy Spirit, we ask you to come. Fill this place with your glory, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So let's worship. Thank you. 
today. We welcome you to Global Harvest Church. Hallelujah. It is good to gather together. Amen. And I think we've got our internet working. Right? So we are live on Facebook as well. As long as Facebook doesn't censor us. Um, okay. But we, <laughs> we welcome you today. And uh, God's good. He's faithful. And uh, of course, it is Mother's Day. And so, we just want to honor you today. If you are a mother, if you are a biological mother, an adopted mother, if you've raised children, if you've raised grandchildren, right, nieces, nephews, whoever, I want you to stand today. And we just want to honor you. Amen. Amen. So, let's give these ladies a round of applause. And we just want to pray a blessing over you today. So keep standing. Amen. So Father, we thank you for these women. And Lord, we bless them today. We rise up as husbands, as sons, as fathers, and we bless them. Lord, thank you. Father, they're, they're the glue that holds things together. And uh, we bless them. Father, we bless the works of their hands. Father, we bless them for their care. Father, we bless them for the foundation of love that they give in families and that they give to society. And Lord, we just call them forth right now in Jesus' name. Father, we call them forth into everything that you have for them. Lord, sometimes they're behind the scenes. But Lord, I thank you that you are calling them forward at this moment in history. Father, not only to be mothers, but to be laborers, God to be co-heirs, co-laborers in the kingdom. And so, Father, we bless them today in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. So, you may be seated. And there are gift bags at the back if you are a mother. Okay? And because we are trying to be careful, don't rummage through them. Right? Just, just pick one up. They're basically all the same thing with a little bit of variation, okay? Um, different scents, okay? Hopefully not different flavors. Don't try that. You'll see why. But, uh, but take one of those and be blessed today. Amen? Amen. Well, it's good to have you guys. Uh, remember, just uh, we have a few guidelines. Those are all in the video. Um, if you are giving an offering, you can do that today um, as you're coming or going. And uh, you can, there in the hallway, we have a basket set up. You can also give online at globalharvestchurch.co, okay? And so I just want to say thank you guys. You've been incredibly, incredibly faithful in giving through this period. And I think actually our giving may have gone up. We have more money in our account than we normally do, which is very miraculous. At least until I pay that insurance payment, so praise God. Right, that happens, but... Just really, really thankful for your faithfulness. And, uh, and you know, um, we, we just continue partnering with other ministries throughout the world. I know that uh, a couple of weeks ago I did send a bit of money to Raj and Colleen Ramidi in India. And they were uh, had an opportunity when everything was locking down to buy food, not only for the orphans in their care, uh, but also others in their community. Be praying for them as well in this time. India is far not only more locked down than we are, you get beat if you leave your house. Right? That's an incentive to stay home. Um, but also in their area, they had a, a gas leak that you know killed some animals and sent people to the hospital. and So they were trying to stay indoors. So be praying for them. And they're just doing a great work. It was seeping into some of the houses, a very dangerous situation. So, you know, Crazy times. Be praying for them. Amen. All right. Well, it's good to be together this morning. I can't dismiss any children to the nursery because. Yes. 
this. And also, um, if you do have an unruly child or husband, uh, the great room is open, and you can go in there, and we are webcasting inside the great room with the TV on. And because we are webcasting, remember, especially if you're close to the kind of the camera area, try to keep your voices down, because anything you say, Joy, will be webcast. And, uh, and I will tell you to keep your mouth shut. I was joking with somebody last week that said that, and I got in big trouble. So, uh, hallelujah. If Lois is watching today, mercies of family. Praise God. Well, it's a very, it's a very key moment this morning, amen, and it's, again, we can pray for Ariel, it's good to have Ariel us here, a little, a little banged up, but she's here, amen, so it's good to have her with us, hallelujah. Uh, you know, so this morning I, I want to preach on, uh, on a message that I call Open Heavens, amen, and uh, how many of you know, we just, if, if you observe much of what's been happening in some of the Jewish feasts, which we kind of keep tabs on, this year at Pentecost, and you know, I preached about the blood and those things on Easter Sunday, which coincided with the, the Feast of uh, uh, Passover, for the first time since probably the very original Passover, we actually experienced Passover. We were in our homes. We were praying the blood of the Lamb over our lives, over our community, in the middle of a plague. <laughs> it wasn't just that we were just celebrating Passover because it's a cool thing to do and having Passover cedars and all those. No, we were experiencing Passover. Right? It was a strange dynamic. Well, you know, a lot of prophetic voices are saying that just as we experience Passover in a very real way this year... There are a lot of prophetic words that Pentecost this year will be much the same way. That we won't just celebrate Pentecost, but there is a fresh outpouring. Now, the old outpouring hasn't ended. You do realize on the day of Pentecost, the Lord poured out His Spirit, and it's continuing. It's been continuing, and we're going to talk about that this morning. But there's something fresh and powerful that the Lord is wanting to do on Pentecost. And we're in those days leading up to Pentecost Sunday, which will actually be May 31st. Okay? Now, the interesting thing is that is also our 12th anniversary as a church. And so you can go into what 12 means and all those things. But I think May 31st, and we don't have to wait till May 31st for a move of God. But I think May 31st is going to be very, very extraordinary for the body of Christ and very extraordinary for us. So I'm expecting, not just on May 31st, but I expect God's going to do something. I expect there is an outpouring of the Spirit in this season. Amen. Now, the days leading up to Pentecost are very important. Okay? There, is, there are a lot of heavy intercessions right now. And there's a great, great intercessory cry that's going out, not only for a, a fresh Pentecost, but for our nation. Uh, I've been listening to a lot of intercessors and what they've been saying and a lot of pro prophets. This is a key time for prayer and intercession. Yes, amen. And, and in the midst of everything that God's doing, don't miss what the Lord is wanting to do in you and through you in this season. Right? I know it's easy to miss those things, but... Um, and again, there was a prophetic word that Charlie Shant put out a couple of weeks ago, and I made reference to that last week, but that Charlie saw himself standing before a large door, and it wasn't yet open, but he, he felt like the Lord was saying, there is a door of effectual service that is opening up for the church on Pentecost. And he was very aware that others were coming to wait at that door for the opening. He said, there are many enemies around us at this moment, but there is a door that is opening on Pentecost for the church. And, uh, very interesting. And again, Charlie also, some, I just make some reference to some other words. He felt like there would be a further shift uh, of COVID-19 on May 7th, which has been this past week. And he also prophesied that it would snow and hail in unusual places as a sign that the economy was being restored. 
you guys know it snowed in Pennsylvania on Friday, Saturday, and some other places? Of course, we got hail, but I don't know that that's unusual for Oklahoma and in spring. But there's something that's shifting, but there's a great weight of intercession that we need to be praying for the yes. shift, yes. for the elimination of COVID-19, and yes. for our economy of this nation to open back up. And that, that absolutely must happen. And I'm thankful for Oklahoma and that Oklahoma is opening up. I know that some churches, 3,000 churches in California, I've seen, you may have seen it on Facebook, have decided we're reopening on Pentecost Sunday, even though the local government there is not allowing them to do that. So there's, there's a great, no political commentary on that, but there's great turmoil and great shifting in this moment. And uh, again, as we're heading toward Pentecost, uh, remember that Pentecost is the feast of open heavens. Amen. That's what that is a celebration all about, about the open heavens. So what does an open heaven look like? Okay. Now, I know a lot of times, you know, we in the church have been guilty of, well, you know, the heavens are brass. There's not an open heaven. We're praying for an open heaven over our region. I definitely believe in intercession. I believe in intercession to shift things. I believe in intercession to open things up. Um, but I also believe that we are already living under an open heaven. Yeah. Amen. And so we're going to look at that today. And we're going to, first of all, we're going to turn to a familiar passage of scripture. But let's turn to Genesis 28. And we're going to look at uh, the first reference to an open heaven, the first reference to the house of God in Scripture. So let's just turn there, at, uh, Genesis 28, and we're going to begin reading in chapter, in verse 10. Let me pray for just a moment. I feel the need to pray further. So Lord, I thank you today. Thank you that there's an open heaven. Father, there's an open heaven over our lives because of Jesus. There's an open heaven in this place. Father, there's an open heaven in this city. Father, no matter what people have said and, and the decrees of the enemy, Lord, there is an open heaven over Ardmore, Oklahoma. God, there's an open heaven over Carter County. Father, there's an open heaven here in the south gate of Oklahoma. Lord, there's an open heaven over this state. And so, Father, we decree an open heaven over Oklahoma. Father, an open heaven over North Texas. We decree that the purposes and the plans of God are not being uh, delayed. They're not being stopped. But Lord, they are coming forth for this city and this state at this moment. And Father, thank you for what you're doing in this season and these days of leading up to Pentecost. Father, I thank you that you've given us a commission, each one of us, to be intercessors. You've given each one of us a commission uh, to move as the body of Christ. And so, Lord, today we thank you for that. Lord, we take our posts today. Father, we take our post. We don't get off our post, but Lord, we stay committed to what you are saying at this moment to see your kingdom come in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's begin reading in verse 10. It says, Then Jacob departed from Beersheba and went toward Haran. And he came to a certain place and spent the night there because the sun had set. And he took one of the stones of the place and put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he had a dream, and behold, a ladder was set on the earth with its top reaching to heaven. And behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord, the God of your father, Abraham, and the God of Isaac, the land on which you lie. I will give it to you and your descendants. Now let's go ahead and skip down to verse 16. And then Jacob awoke from his sleep said, surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And, it. and he was afraid and said, how awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Amen. So really, this is the first mention of the house of God in Scripture. Who's the house of God? We are. Right? We're a house of God because God tabernacles in us by his spirit, but we are also corporately together, a house of God, a temple of his presence. We're living stones 
being united and put together to house the glory of God. Now, the exciting thing about that is we're, we're being formed in fashion. Yeah. Do you sometimes feel like you're being sanded on a little bit so you can fit the wall better? You felt that way in the last days? Yeah. Right? That God's further positioning you as part of the house of God? Amen. That's what he's doing. Now, we are the house of God, and we are the gate of heaven. Now, we're going to look at some New Testament church scriptures in a moment, but realize that the church should be the gateway to heaven. Amen. Now, what does that mean? That means that when we come together, both individually and corporately, that, the new, that, the, that this should be a place that is filled with a presence of an awareness of God. What should mark the church? The glory of God. Amen. The presence of God, Amen. the awareness of God. When we come together, there should be more than anything an awareness of, oh my goodness, God is present. He is in our midst. It's not so much the programs that we have, though that's good. But it's the reality that when we come together, there is a presence and a glory of God. When people come in our midst, they should be aware, even if they don't understand what they're experiencing, that there is a presence and a glory of God here. Amen. There is this, the move of the Spirit. There's also a lot of angelic activity that we're going to get to in a minute. Amen. But uh, we, we, in the church, we have an ex, should have an experience of the Spirit so real that people recognize God's here. Right? When people come together, I don't want them just to say, man, that was that was good worship. I do want them to say that. Or to say, man, those people were so friendly and loving. I do want them to say that. Or that was a good message. No, when people come together in the, in the house of God, whatever that looks like, I want them to recognize, oh my goodness, I experienced his presence. I was touched by his glory. I was touched by his majesty. I was touched by his holiness. Amen. And again, we talked about this some last week, but this is the key to unity. Focusing on those things that please him and draw his presence. Yeah. When we come together, I want us to do the things that are pleasing to him and his presence. Amen. That's what it's like when we come together as the church. Now, that's an Old Testament reference. Let's go ahead and let's turn to a New Testament reference in John chapter 1. John chapter 1, beginning in verse 47. This is very interesting. Jesus is calling his 12 disciples. Amen. And it says, Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite in the, indeed in whom is no guile or deceit or something like that. I mean, Jesus is reading Nathanael's mail. Do you realize Jesus was moving by the Spirit, right? And the word of knowledge and discerning of spirits and those things. And Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? And Jesus answered and said to him, before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. And Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, teacher, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. So Jesus answered and said to him, because I sent to you that I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe you shall see greater things than these? And he said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, you shall see the heavens open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Amen. Jesus basically said, guess what, boys? I'm a walking open heaven. Wow. It's the same reference of what we saw in Genesis 28, the house of God. Because didn't Jesus come to tabernacle among us? Yeah. Right? He came to dwell in our midst as the glory and the presence of God. Amen. And, you know, because of this, we understand that in the house of God, there's a ladder, there's a stairway, right? The 
Brazilian word is even escala, which is where we get escalator, right? There's, a, there's this connection between earth and heaven, and it comes because Jesus is that ladder. He's that stairway bringing the presence of God, the glory of God, into the church. Amen? And because of what? When Jesus was crucified, heaven was open. Now, you're like, great, heaven's open. But that means we have the resources of heaven that are available to us. When you're praying for people, do you realize that you have the resources of heaven? Okay. When you're praying for someone and they need a new lung, you're, you're getting something out of an open heaven and releasing it to them. Amen. When you're praying for someone and they need a creative miracle, you're taking of the resources of heaven and you're giving it to them. Amen. Because there is an, a connection. There is a ladder. The, the ladder of Jesus. Angels are ascending and descending out of heaven. Now, I think they're ascending and descending because they come out of the presence of God supercharged. And they come on assignments and they come on commission carrying the glory of God to impart into our midst the will of the Father. Now, it's interesting that demons can't do that. And aren't you glad? Yeah. Right? At one time, maybe they were, you know, there are a lot of theories of what demons are, as fallen angels and all that. They can't go into the presence of God and get charged anymore. But the angelic can and they're going, they're coming and going with great activity. One of, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but one of the, the real signs of an open heaven is a lot of angelic activity. Amen. Yeah, but, but it came because Jesus, what he did on the cross, heaven was pierced and heaven was open. And because of what God has done through Jesus, the offspring of heaven, all nations have been blessed. Amen. Now, it's interesting all here as well in this passage that it talks about Jesus refers to himself as the Son of Man. Do you ever like, what's, what's up with that Son of Man thing? You read that sometimes and you're like, well, was Jesus just being humble? Well, did you know that the Son of Man is actually a messianic title? I'm just going to read. Just keep your, your place there. But I want to read to you out of Daniel 7.13. And Daniel's speaking and he says, I kept looking in the night visions. I think that's an interesting phrase. I kept looking in the night visions. Anybody ever have dreams or visions where you're not quite sure what's going on? Keep looking. Right? Sometimes God starts showing something up in a dream or a vision and we need to keep looking. It says, And behold, with the clouds of heaven, one like a son of man was coming. And he came up to the ancient of days and was presented before him. And to him was given dominion, glory, and a kingdom that all the people's nations of men and men of every language might serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which will not pass away. And his kingdom is one which will not be destroyed. Amen. So when Jesus is saying, I'm the son of man, he's not just saying, hey, I'm, I'm humble. No, he's saying, I'm Messiah. Right? I'm the one that Daniel saw who was going to be presented to the ancient of days, bringing a kingdom, bringing authority, bringing glory to the people of God, that all nations will be touched. He's basically saying, you know, Guys, you're going to see. You, you think you've seen something now, Nathaniel? Because I said I saw you standing under a tree. But he's basically saying what you're going to see is the angels of God descending and ascending on me. Because I am the son of man that Daniel saw in a night vision. Amen. I am Messiah. I'm the son of God. And I'm going to, I'm God to come flesh. And you're going to experience 
in open heaven because of what I'm going to do. Glory. Hallelujah. We have an open heaven because of him. Now, because we are the body of Christ on earth today, where is the open heaven supposed to be? Over us. Right? You have the authority to walk under an open heaven. When you walk into a place and there's demonic activity, do you have to be like, well, man, the devil's too strong here. Or do you walk in and say, I just brought the open heaven with me. Right now, that doesn't mean that some of those things might not challenge you because they're liars and they like to bluff. But you walk in the reality of an open heaven. When you walk in where salvation needs to come, where people need to get saved, where they need to get healed, where they need to get delivered, where there needs to be provision, you walk in with an open heaven carrying something of his presence, something of his glory that is supernatural that the earth is waiting on. You have access to heaven because of Christ. Amen. There is an open heaven. Now, what are some of the benefits of the open heaven? Now, we talk a lot about on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit gets poured out, right? There's this, there's this whole new paradigm of the presence and the fire of the Spirit that comes. But, you know... I haven't taught a lot on this, but there's this increased angelic activity that came on the day of Pentecost. Yeah. Yeah. Now, sometimes we start talking about angels and people get nervous. Yeah. Right? I do because I'm like, God, I don't want to. I don't want to get kooky. I actually think I actually get afraid of that sometimes. Sometimes you'll maybe like, you're too far gone. But I'm, I'm like, I don't want to get too far out there on some stuff. But one of the signs and descending, amen? And, and that is a sign of a lot of kingdom activity going on, amen? Now let's look at some things here. I want to turn to Hebrews chapter 1. The writer of Hebrews, and no one's quite sure who that is. For the sake of those who will inherit salvation. Now, who here is inheriting salvation? We should all raise our hands. So, who is sent to render service to us? Angels. Did you know that the Father sends angels to minister to you and to help you? They're ministering spirits. And this shouldn't be weird. Now, it does get weird because, you know... Some new age stuff and all this that gets into all this, but you know, that doesn't discount from the reality that angels have been sent from the presence of God with assignments not only for churches, not only for cities and nations, but assignments to help you and to minister to you. Right now, we, we know that. Um, Now, it talks to them about them being ministering spirits. The root of the word ministering is diakonos. Okay, it's the Greek word diakonos, which is where we get the word deacon. Okay, and basically that means someone who comes along and waits upon you and helps you. Is that crazy? Angels have been assigned to come alongside you wait upon you and help you. So husbands, today on Mother's Day, if you ask your wife to do something, ladies, just turn to him and say, ask your angel. Right? Actually, no, don't do that. I might cause problems on Mother's Day. Right? <laughs> now, there is a caution because in Revelation 19.10, okay, John has this incredible, incredible vision, and he's not sure what's happening, but an angel shows up to actually help explain to him 
what this vision is all about. And so he starts to fall down and worship this angel. And they just says, dude, don't do that. I'm also a servant, and you're not supposed to worship me. Worship God. So if you ever have an experience with an angel that shows up and wants you to worship him, rebuke him. Right? Because that is not an angel that's sent from the throne of heaven anyway. Because <laughs> we know in history that certain angels have shown up. I mean, Paul said even if an angel comes and preaches to you a different gospel, then this, let him be accursed. And we know in history that angelic beings have shown up for um, to give uh, like messages for the foundations of the Quran and the Islam. They've shown up for um, uh, Mormons, the Church of Latter-day Saints, giving them different gospels. So you have to be careful when you start messing with supernatural beings. Okay? Make sure you know what you're doing. Many, many things outside of the pulpit and some of the encounters and some of the things that we experience. And you know, he talked about, he said, there are creatures that show up sometimes and they're that I see in the spirit and they're actually really beautiful. And he said, I asked the Lord, what is this? And the Lord will say, sometimes I don't have anything to do with that. Because right? just because you see something in the spirit, make sure what it is. Because a lot of people can get deceived. So I just want to give that call. Oh, no, before we go any further. Amen. Those of you that see in the spirit, wow. I should just let Jamie or Will join me in a group discussion or something. Because you see a lot of strange things when you start seeing in the spirit. And you have to judge and you have to discern. Amen. Amen. So I was reading a testimony from Randy Clark and, and it was shortly after uh, Toronto had happened and, and Randy was moving more into evangelism. He was able to meet the Argentinian uh, revivalist and evangelist, Omar Cabrera. And he asked Omar, he said, Omar, you've been an evangelist for several years. You've been super successful. He said, I'm moving more into evangelism. And he said, what advice and encouragement can you give me as a young evangelist to be more effective? And Omar basically told him, he said, Randy, I have never understood why you North Americans who understand the Holy Spirit, you understand the gifts of the Spirit, and you ask for the Holy Spirit to come, and you want to move in the gifts of the Spirit, but why don't you pray for God to send his angels to your meetings? Because there is an increased activity of the kingdom angelic beings get involved. This is Bible, y'all. I'm going to give you some examples because I don't want you, those of you that are watching on Facebook, just like, who is this crazy man? Are you talking about angels? And, no. There is such a scriptural basis for the angelic when you start reading scripture. Amen. It is all throughout the New Testament. It's all throughout the Old Testament. You know, and sometimes we do get scared of angelic experiences. Right. right? But what happened to Jesus when he was being tempted in the wilderness? He gets baptized in the Holy Spirit, right? Even Jesus had to get baptized in the Holy Spirit at his baptism. And he goes out, the Spirit leads him out into the wilderness for 40 days of temptation. He was in isolation. 40 days of isolation will make you crazy, right? Though after 40 days with family, some of us may be like, I'd like to be alone in the wilderness, right? <laughs> but at the end of that, when he endured that temptation, who came and ministered to him? Angels. And some of us may think, well, I don't need no angel ministering to me. Well, Jesus apparently needed angels ministering to him. So maybe we too are times we need ministry from the angelic. Now sometimes we're not aware of it. Sometimes we don't know it's happening. Okay? But a lot of times as our eyes start getting open to the spirit and 
in the spiritual realm and the spiritual dynamics, our eyes and our ears and our, our senses start getting opened up. I don't see a lot of angels, but sometimes I'm very aware of their presence. Right? It's a different dynamic than the Holy Spirit. Right? Uh, but Jesus, and then Jesus was also ministered to in the Garden of Gethsemane when he was agonizing over whether, Lord, take this cup from me. You know what happened? It says an angel came and strengthened him. Do you know sometimes when you're struggling yeah. to walk in righteousness? Yeah. When you're struggling to stay on the plan of God? I believe that the Lord, and of course, the thing is, these incidences increase as we pray and as others pray for us, I believe angels come and strengthen you. Amen. Aren't you glad that angels can come and strengthen you? Amen. That they're sent from the presence of the Father, supercharged? I think that's why sometimes people fall out. Because they got a different wiring than we do. Right? And they come and they release something of the glory and the presence of God. And that's why sometimes sometimes it's the anointing, but sometimes I think we're touched by an angelic being. Right. right? It's just a theory. But other angelic happenings and testimonies in Scripture. When in the book of Acts, when Peter was in prison, um, <laughs> who came and let him out of prison? An angel. Right? This angelic being came, opened the prison doors. Amen? I want to give you another quick testimony. This is a great testimony along those lines. I was reading this testimony of years ago. Of, this was a Baptist missionary in Uganda. And apparently in the area in which he was ministering, and he was a young guy, um, there were a group of white mercenaries in the, causing trouble. And so the government came and arrested them, and there was a little confusion that he was a white missionary, and he got arrested also. And he tried to explain to them, I'm not a mercenary, I am a missionary. But he still got in prison with all of them, they were all going to be executed the next day. So he's very concerned, obviously. Well, in the night, a man came to him and said, he'd never seen this man, this man came to him and said, at a certain time, your door is going to be open. Wow. And you need to go out. And you need to go out of the building. And you need to turn at this corner. And you need to go down. And there's a lake there. And he said, you're going to find a canoe at the bottom, at the edge of the lake. You can get in that canoe and go across. So exactly what this person told him happened. He got out at that time. He walked down, got across the lake. His life was spared. Well, his parents are also missionaries in Uganda as well. And uh, when they reunite, they're like, son, what was happening to you on this particular day at this particular time? They said, because this incredible prayer burden came on us. And we begin to intercede for you until you lift it. And he's like, well, that was the day that I got arrested. And that was the time that this angelic being came to me, this man who I believe was an angel angelic being came to me and told me what to do. Angels respond to our prayers. Right? And when a prayer burden comes through on you, and it may not be like a, oh, shabakababa. No, it may just be like, it may be like that, okay? <laughs> but it may be like, well, you know, I wonder what's going on with Joe right now. I haven't thought about Joe and Lord, whatever's going on with Joe, I ask that you just minister to him right now. I may pray in the Spirit for a while for Joe, right? Because God is, and I don't know why God has chosen to work through prayer. I don't know why God has chosen to work through angels. I don't know why God has chosen to work through me and you, but he has. Yes, thank you, God. Right? So, we can just ponder and say, well, God, I don't understand why you use angels. Just know that he does cooperate with him because it is a reality of an open heaven that we're living in. 
that we're living under. I was very aware this week as we were, some of us gathered for a time of intercessory prayer, there was a strong, strong angelic presence. I was very aware that certain angels were present that normally are here. And I felt a different authority and a different um, uh, broader expression of prayer. And I was just like, God, what is going on? But I knew that there were angels that had not only come to assist our prayers, but I believe they were listening to our prayers and wanting to take what we had prayed and begin to move. And I tell you guys, this is such a key time for intercession for our nation. And if we want to see our nation further open up and come out of this time and to see our economy restored, I believe that the Father is waiting on our prayers. We just think, well, God wants to, he's going to do it if he's going to do it. No, he's looking for people who will position themselves in prayer, who will partner with the Holy Spirit, who will partner with the heavenly realm to see the glory of God and the kingdom of God being released in our nation. And we've got to move in that realm. Amen. So another thing, angels. Philip, who preached in the Samaritan revival, right? In the middle of that, God moves. There's this major revival that breaks out. But did you know there's a point when the Holy Spirit said, I, when the Holy Spirit, we spoke to him later, but an angelic being came to him and said, now I want you to go to this one place. And so he follows the angel. And when he gets there, there's the Ethiopian eunuch sitting in his chariot reading out of the Old Testament scripture. And that's when the, the Holy Spirit, it's interesting to me when I read the book of Acts. Because first an angel told him to go to this certain place. And then it says clearly the Holy Spirit told him to go and share the gospel with that man. He's led both by angels and by the Holy Spirit. Wow. That's Bible. I think that's in Acts chapter 8, Acts chapter 9. Go check it out. We don't have time to read it this morning. But if you don't believe me, go look at it. Right? I've already mentioned that when John had, his, had the revelation, he had the vision that he had, he didn't understand what all it meant, and an angel showed up to help him understand and interpret it. That's very significant. Paul, when Paul was on a ship and about to be shipwrecked, what happened? Who came and, and ministered to him and encouraged him and strengthened him and even gave him direction? An angel. So today you may be like, well, man, I don't know, this kooky angel stuff, I'm going to stay away from it. It's a little cross a boundary that I don't want to go across. But if you read just the Gospels in the book of Acts, Jesus, Paul, John, Philip the Evangelist, um, all of these people, um, Peter, were all directed, strengthened, ministered to by angels. So why are we afraid to partner with them? Right? Here's, some, here's another testimony. Right? I love this testimony as well. I, I think I've talked about it before. But uh, because angels do more than just come and protect you. I think we all have that understanding that we have. That's big in Christianity. We've got to go to a guardian angel. And I think angels do that. But they do a lot more than that, as we see. Yeah. Not only have they led people out of danger, but they come to strengthen. There have been times I'm aware that an angel's come to me and put something in me. Anybody else ever experienced that? Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a strange dynamic, but I saw it. I was just like, God, what's going on? Right? See, it pulls stuff out of me, too, so that's good. <laughs> I don't know the theology of all that, but... You know, but uh, there's also more than they do than that. You know, we know that they're involved in the worship of heaven and all those things. But here's a testimony from the early days of the Toronto awakening and outpouring. And uh, Randy Clark prayed for a 14-year-old girl named Heather. And uh, we prayed for her. She was out for about 45 minutes. 
and Heather was very dyslexic, um, had a lot of problems in school, and uh, her parents were pastors, but before that, they had been mental health professionals, so they understood a lot of these dynamics. Well, Heather couldn't do math. Maybe we need to pray for angels to come. Lord. Right? Graham's, Graham's faith just grabbed a hold of that, I felt it. But, <laughs> but Heather was out for 45 minutes, and during this time, she had a vision that an angel came and operated on her head and rewired it. Amen. And after she came out of this experience, she was no longer dyslexic. She graduated, I think, fourth in her class. Her reading problems were gone after this. And what's even more significant, after this happened to her, um, she went and prayed for her best friend, Monica, who was also dyslexic. And she didn't tell Monica anything that had happened to her. And so she prays for Monica. Monica falls out, and she has a vision of an angel that comes and operates on her head and rewires it. So, I don't understand all that. She got some type of impartation or the angel, which maybe was a healing angel, accompanied her. Because I think sometimes when we start moving in certain things, it's because there's an angelic being that accompanies us. Has heard of William Branham? Probably one of the greatest healing evangelists slash prophets of the 20th century. Study his life. Now, he ended poorly, right? Which is good for us to read and study because it shows us that we can all be deceived no matter how gifted we are. Right? That's a lesson we have to have. But Branham, when he got ready to minister to the sick, he would wait for this angel to come. And when he, that angel came, he knew that he would begin to move in healing and move in words of knowledge. So I don't understand all that, okay? But I know that it's happening and that angels come and they move. I believe there are healing angels in this place. I believe there are angelic beings in this place that are here to oversee Revival and awakening. They're here positioned because they're on an assignment from the Father to oversee the revival and the awakening for this city and this region that's been prophesied. And when we begin to pray for it, and when we begin to release our faith for it, and when we begin to talk about it, the Scripture says that they obey our word. They're obeying the things that we're praying, the things that we're believing for, the things that we're decreeing. They actually need our prayers. They're operating in those things. Amen. And, and they're waiting. And I, you know, there's a testimony, and I can't tell it all because I, don't, I can't remember it exactly, but the, the young girl that was at Mariah Chapel, in Wales. Is that where it was, Olivia? Was it at Mar No, where was it? Was it the U.S.? Okay. Was it, was it in California? Okay. That's why I said I couldn't tell the story because I don't know it. But Mariah Chapel's in Wales. Anyway, wherever this girl was, <laughs> she saw this large angelic being. God opened her eyes to see him. She been sent for revival and awakening, but I've been waiting for someone to pray and to call this forth. I'm waiting. I'm waiting on the prayers of the saints. And even though we live under an open heaven where there's a lot of angelic activity, those angelic beings are waiting for the people of God to take up prayer and intercession. 
Does our nation need a move of God? Yeah. You do realize God doesn't move based on need. I'm going to say that again. God doesn't move based on our need. He moves based on our faith, based on our prayers, based on our expectation, based on our hunger, based on our obedience. And we will not see a move of God without radical prayer and intercession. And I'm challenged right now. And I believe we in the church are in a great month of decision. We're in a great moment of decision. And we can cooperate with what the Lord is doing. Because he's looking for people who will pray. They're angelic beings who are looking for people who will pray. Amen? We need to position ourselves under this open heaven, partnering with the Holy Spirit, partnering with angelic beings. You know, you guys, and you can't depend on someone else to pray. Before we went into this time, Remember when I preached on the five wise and the five foolish virgins? Such a strong prophetic declaration that came forth. And it was about, you've got to get your own oil. Your own intimacy. And in this moment, in this great moment of turmoil in the nation, which is always when the kingdom comes forth is in moments of turmoil. But there's a divine moment where we can pray and lay a hold of what God's doing and see his kingdom come forth, or we can miss it. We can miss God. There's something of his presence and his glory that we have to partner with, his word, his angelic beings. Amen. When the day of Pentecost came, there was this new relationship with the Holy Spirit as the Holy Spirit was poured out. But there was also a new relationship with the angelic. Now, Hebrews. Let's turn back to Hebrews for just a moment. Hebrews 1, verse 7, and then we're going to go to Acts chapter 2. Because I'm, because I'm closing. And of the angels, he says, who makes... His angels wind and his ministers a flame of fire. It sounds like poetry, doesn't it? Sometimes we read scripture and we're like, oh, that's really poetic. But it says he makes his angels wind and his ministers flames of fire. Well, I want us to turn to Acts chapter 2. chapter 2 verse 1 and when the day of Pentecost had come they were all together in one place and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a violent rushing wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting he makes his angels wind and there came this wind this sound of wind and then it goes on to say Verse 3, and there appeared to them tongues as of fire, distributing themselves, and they rested on each one of them. He makes his ministers flames of fire. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit was giving them utterance. I believe the sign of the Holy Spirit, now, the Spirit and the angelic was obviously very intermediate. But the sign of the infilling of the Spirit was, was that they were praying in unknown languages. But I believe the wind and the fire were angelic beings. Seems to fit, doesn't it? An open heaven birthed the church with increasing.
increased activity and outpouring of the Holy Spirit in angelic beings. Amen. So, don't be afraid when the angelic shows up. They're already here. They're already with you. Right? But don't be afraid when maybe you start seeing them or sensing their presence. Amen. Because sometimes they come on an assignment to deliver something to you, right? To release something to you, right? Read a testimony of, if you've heard of Mahesh Shabda, his wife, Bonnie, is a prophet and a seer. She was in a meeting one night where Randy Clark was praying impartation for leaders. And she saw these angels coming and they were releasing something to each one Randy prayed for. But they would also pull out a scroll make declarations over them when they pray. And she said, oh, Randy, I think it's they're looking at the destiny of each person that they're praying for, and they're making a declaration of the will, the purpose, and the destiny of God. Do you need sometimes an angel to declare destiny over your life? I do. They're very involved in assignments from the Father. And so we need to partner with them. We need to partner with the Holy Spirit at this moment in history. So I want us to stand right now. Let's just stand together. And I just want to pray a prayer over each one of us this morning. Amen. Father, I want to thank you today for your presence. Lord, thank you that we're living under an open heaven. Father, thank you for the angelic beings that are here. Father, that, Father, that you have sent on assignment. You have sent to oversee the revival and awakening. God, that have sent, been sent from your throne to, to declare your will and your purpose for each one of our lives for our families, for this church, for the city, and Father, for this state, for the state of Oklahoma. So Father, we thank you today. Lord, I ask that you open our eyes. Father, open our eyes to begin to see. We may have never seen into the spirit before, but Father, I even ask right now that there would be an anointing to open eyes to see into this heavenly realm. Father, open ears to hear. Open uh, all of our spiritual senses, uh, not only to discern and to see, but to sense and to know, God, what you're doing through your spirit, but also to see in a heavenly realm. And Father, we just rebuke any, uh, anything demonic that would try to play havoc with people's senses and try to deceive. Uh, we just say, oh Lord, let us recognize and discern and not pay attention to those things. But even those, those counterfeit beings who attach themselves to some of us and uh, some of those demonic assignments, Lord, we just come against that right now in Jesus' name. And Lord, we cut every demonic assignment and every demonic attachment off right now. And Lord, I thank you that you're even sending angels to war against those things. Father, to let us recognize the enemy's assignments in our life right now. Father, we cut those things off in the name of Jesus. We cut off every demonic assignment and attachment. And Lord, I thank you for the angels that are present in all of our lives. And Father, that are even here to uh, bring those greater assignments, those impartations, the protection the things that we need, even at times the guidance that we need as they partner with the Holy Spirit to lead us in this season. And so, Father, I thank you even right now that there's a greater anointing for intercession and prayer that's coming on people. Father, we can't pray as we've always prayed before, but there is a new level of prayer and intercession for your people. And Lord, we just thank you, Lord. Father, we just receive that greater anointing right now. Father, we receive, Lord, thank you for everything that you're pouring out right now. Not only a mantle of intercession, 
the Father a mantle to see in new realms, to see in the Spirit, to recognize what the Father's doing. It's We're those that are inheriting salvation. And so, Father, I thank you for everything, everything that comes with that today. Lord, I ask for the more. Open our eyes right now. Open our eyes to see. Father, we invite even more of the angelic to come in. Lord, we even invite more of your spirit, more of your presence in this place, in this neighborhood. Father, in our homes, in our businesses, in our city today. Father God, here and throughout this, this south gate of Oklahoma. Father, thank you for those greater anointings that are coming upon your people. Father, I pray even those that are watching on Facebook today, that are watching at this moment, that are watched later throughout the day and the week. Lord, I ask that they just get an impartation. Father, that you release angels in their homes. Father, you release angels right now uh, to open their eyes to see what's going on in the heavenly realm, what's going on, Father. And so, Father, we just receive that today. Father, we receive what you're doing today, God, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So, before we dismiss, anybody have a problem with the Achilles tendon? Is that a real thing? No, as if I was just praying, I just heard the Lord say Achilles tendon. So, what, what's, what's going on? So, Father, is it hurting right now? A little bit. Okay. Lisa, lay hands on him. <laughs> How long have you had this problem? Months. Okay. So, is it, does the doctor say what it is, or do you have any idea? Yeah, I understand. Why the mm hmm big on the was big. Yeah, I get it. So, Lord, <laughs> we ask you to extend your hand right now. Release healing to the Achilles tendon right now in Jesus' name. All tension, all pain, all inflammation, whatever's going on, we speak healing to the tendon. All throughout his leg, all wherever that is, I don't even know. I don't know anatomy. Lord, I ask that you touch our brother right now in Jesus' name. It's like in the back of the, the calf. And Father, I even ask that you, if there are healing angels present, that they just minister to our brother right now. Healing to the Achilles tendon for Josh, in Jesus' name. Lord, thank you that you're extending your hand right now. So is anything going on? Anything that you sense happening right now, Josh? Is there in peace? Is there, was there pain in it when we started praying? Speak your shalom to that tendon right now in Jesus' name. 100% healing, God, in Jesus' name. Peace to the tendon, rest to the tendon, restoration to the tendon in Jesus' name. No more. Affliction, go right now. Affliction, go in Jesus' name. We speak to you to go in Jesus' name. That which has come to harass and steal Father, we command it to go in Jesus' name. We speak more healing in Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Okay? Anything happening? Okay, that's cool. Amen. So just monitor it. We'll continue to pray. So that's really fun. <laughs> yeah, just when I was about to, just teaching moment when I was just about to shut down, I just heard Achilles tendon. It was very quick. It wasn't like Achilles tendon. You know? And for me, I know when I get a word of knowledge, I can miss it very easily if I'm not paying attention. And so that's just that's how God speaks to me. I know God speaks that way to a lot of people in different ways. A lot of people hear things that way, but just pay attention to those things because they can be very fast. Okay. And uh, so praise God. We just believe together. Good job.
much. Wow. Isn't God good? Thank you. Lord, we just thank you for your presence today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that we can gather again today. Lord, we bless our city. Father, we pray for the total elimination of COVID-19. Lord, we bless our state today. Father, we bless our state and what you're doing in Oklahoma. Father, there's such a cry for the state of Oklahoma that I feel coming up, Lord. And Father, I just thank you for economic recovery. But Lord, even beyond that, Lord, I thank you for an awakening, revival, and transformation. And Lord, that we're just not going to go back to life as normal. But the new normal will be your presence. The new normal will be revival. We declare a new normal of revival and transformation and awakening over this state today in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for even that partnership with Texas that's further coming forth as we partner together in the revival and the economy, God. In Jesus' name, we thank you, God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. All right. We are dismissed. Remember, ladies, grab a mother's. Grab a bag. Amen. Sorry. There might, there might not be enough for all ladies. So. But if you're a mother, grab a bag. And be blessed. Have a great day with family and friends, spouses, children. Amen. Bless you guys. Have a great day.